PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young, this time on location in the capital of the Empire State. That's right. It's Albany, New York. And joining me here at an NCIA event is actually the executive director of the NCIA, Aaron Smith. Aaron, you are still the executive director, right? Uh, absolutely. That's as long as I'll have me. So here, here. It's good to see you again. So it's been a few years. You and I met in 2019, April, in Portland, Maine, before anybody even knew what COVID was, right? And here we are a few years later, we've survived, and the cannabis needle has moved quite a bit. I think it's 19 states now, 38 medical, I think if we're keeping score at home. Yeah, it's just pretty amazing that just even through the pandemic, we've continued to see progress at the state level, and then you know also where, where NCIA works the most at the federal level, um, even in, with the backdrop of the pandemic and the economic decline and everything that went with it, uh, cannabis remains a, a popular issue. Well, it's a popular issue certainly within the industry, but I also think in a lot of ways the industry is cursed. Who expected a war? Who expected a COVID? Who expected inflation like you have? How in the world do you still make cannabis a priority in D.C.? Well, you know, it's, it's really... It's challenging for sure, and but um, you know we really kind of have to tie it to whatever whatever else is going on. Now you you can't tie cannabis policy to the war in Ukraine uh, certainly, but you can uh, when you're talking about job creation and economic vitality and saving money on law enforcement resources, and you know really also at this point we already have like you said we have over 30 states that have a cannabis industry operating. And they don't have access to, to normal banking services, and that's the issue that we're driving every day in D.C. to try to pass the Safe Banking Act. You know, I remember talking to Michael Correa at, I want to say six months ago, and I remember him saying safe banking is low-hanging fruit. Well, it's still hanging on that tree, isn't it? Uh, how challenging has it been? I mean, you and I can sit here and we can explain it and understand it, but getting it through the heads of the the Senate and the senators who have been there forever and are just set in their ways and not listening to their constituents. Ooh, there I go with a little political view there. Um, it's it's an almost an everyday battle for you guys. Isn't it? Yeah, but you know, but what's interesting though is this is an everyday battle for everybody who's trying to see any progress in Washington. Not, you know, mo <laughs> nothing's happening. The Senate isn't getting anything done thanks to the filibuster. Um, I think that you know we also have some just severe dysfunction in that. And I'll say this because we're here in New York, is that there's one one man who can get safe banking passed today, and that's Chuck Schumer. Um, he's decided instead to focus his efforts on other bills that we we support greatly. Um, but, you know, his, his broader view of how we should reform cannabis uh, in this country, which we absolutely applaud, but he doesn't have the votes for that. So, you know, we, we'd like to see is let's bring up something that does have the 60 votes. We think we have the 60 votes for, for safe banking. And you then, do. Uh, and then let's talk about, you know, something that we can, we can move beyond that. Instead, it's letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. And, and we're seeing it in, um, in every, uh, almost every other issue uh, on the Hill right now. They keep pointing fingers at each other instead of themselves. You know, in sports, we always say, when you look in the mirror, you are responsible for that person. And I don't see that happening at the, in, the, in the Senate right now. And, it, and it, I'll tell you what, the, the comments that I get on some of the content that we put out there is pretty vicious towards the government. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of cynicism out there. And, uh, you know, I still remain hopeful that we will get progress. I think it's going to keep coming from the states first. Um, you know, there's a, there's a possibility that, uh, a good possibility, I'm not, not going to put money on it right now, but it's, it's worth mentioning is that, you know, safe banking is in the America Competes Act, which is in the conference committee, right? It's in the House version, I should say, uh, which is in the conference committee, and, and that's one way it could slip into law. Uh, after that, it's going to go into election, and then we'll see, you know, maybe we'll be dealing with the Republicans again next year. But, but uh, either way, we're going to keep pushing it. You know, it's funny, I saw a note that some of the Republicans who might be up for election in the midterms may end up being the heroes and being that pro-cannabis element. Uh, at this point, as an industry, I don't bet you don't care which political party is in charge. Well, I mean, I, I would say, I, I, you know, I, I've always thought that it could be the Republicans that could really use this issue to, to garner the younger voters that they need and to, um, you know, to advance their interests. But it still remains, by and large, the vast majority of the elected officials that support this issue are on the Democratic side. And the reason, you know, and, and 
you know, Mitch McConnell held this issue up when he was in, in control of the Senate because he didn't like cannabis. You know, Chuck Schumer's holding this up because he likes cannabis so much that he's he doesn't want it to be incremental. And, you know, I think that, I, you know, in some ways it's like the, the wokeness has kind of <laughs> kind of uh, hurt our issue because we all want to, you know, let's make safe banking into this big social justice issue. And then and then we don't have the Republican votes that we need to get this thing passed. So I, I really would like to see on this issue and so many others, I'd like to see more incentive for senators and, and elected officials to reach across the aisle and just get something done. If safe banking gets enacted, does it also decriminalize it? Does it take it off the controlled substances? It does not, no. does it? No, absolutely not. And that's why we have the support of, the, of, of more Republicans, why we have the, the American Bankers Association on it. Once we start to try to go further than that, we don't quite have the 60 votes yet. And so that's, you know, that's why it's so important that we work on what we can get done. That's the, it's the art of possible, you know, in politics. Like, let's work on what we can get done and then work on what we, the next thing that needs to get done. The war, the, the fight's never over, you know. And, and I, you know, I could say, again, this is, a, this is a problem throughout our government right now. There's gun safety advocates that are saying the same thing right now. Why can't we just do one thing, something? And uh, so I don't, feel, I don't feel that special in terms of, you know, cannabis right anymore. Well, that's interesting because I, I would think that's really a challenge. It, it's almost like every week there's another barrier to entry. There's another challenge for the industry. The people in the industry obviously are, you know, have tunnel vision. They are, they're only you know, one. I believe there's actually a national cannabis party now. Uh, Redmond, I think, is running for president or something, you know, and God love him. You know, I remember Pat Paulson, too, people, okay? Uh, that being said, how, if it truly is going to be the win, the little win, but the win, um, will we see, can, how do you think you'll see that before the midterms, I guess is the question. Well, I mean, I think, uh, sadly, I think the only way we might see that would be safe banking through the America Competes Act. And I really want to, you know, encourage everybody listening and watching today to, to call their member of Congress, call their senators, say keep safe banking in the America Competes Act. That's, hap that's being discussed right now in, in hearings and in, you know, behind the scenes meetings. And that's, that's really the, the kind of the last shot. You know, there might be other opportunities down the road, but, you know, the elections are, the election season is, it's upon us already. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, after August, I wouldn't expect to see much get done. You know, I'm from Massachusetts, so needless to say, my senators and representatives understand what the public would like to see. It's a legal adult use state. Um, there's actually been some movement at the state level to make it a little bit easier to uh, attain a host uh, community agreement, uh, which has been a big barrier to entry for a lot of people. Uh, that being said, that is movement in a small area of the United States. It's a huge country. And what is the feeling? Are we starting to see, do they look at that Pew Research or the Gallup poll of 68% want legalization? And gosh, I think it's 90% recognize the medicinal values of this plant. One guy, you mentioned him already, it, is Senator McConnell. Did he have any idea what was going on with that farm bill in 2018? He kind of opened up a Pandora's box, and I don't think he re really understood it. Well, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if he didn't, didn't understand it, but I mean, it definitely uh, was more complicated than I think you know most of Congress to understand when you started looking at all that you know psychoactive cannabinoids derived from hemp was not something that was really contemplated. Right. And uh, that's, I mean, that's a testament to the, the innovation of, in, you know, how the free market and capitalism works. People find a way. Um, that said, I, you, know, I, you know, we do support regulating those, those products, similarly to cannabinoids derived from marijuana, because it's, they're the same thing if they're, if they're psychoactive. Um, so, you know, I mean, but no, people are looking at the public opinion. I mean, if you, well, you know, like it's, you know, when you look at the last year, it's really frustrating when you look at all oh, the last year, Congress hasn't done anything. But if you look over the last 10 years, 20 years, you know, when I started doing this almost 20 years ago, there was marijuana wasn't legal in any state. The, you know, George Bush was president and cracking down on medical cannabis uh, operators almost every day. And you had, you know, public support was, I think, 30 something percent and almost no one in Congress would support this. And so, you know, we're definitely making progress. It's just you have to kind of step back and play the long game if you're really going to appreciate that progress. It's been a long game for everybody in the trenches, uh, too. Um, is there any... I know there's a couple of other states now that are looking at this. I know, uh, uh, I know North Carolina, actually, of all states, uh, maybe actually introducing a medical plan. Rhode Island just went uh, legal. Connecticut. 
uh, and you know, the only state that isn't in New England is New Hampshire, and I know the guy who's trying to change that in New Hampshire, a rep there, and he, I feel so bad for him because he's knocking his head against the wall so much, and every time he thinks he's got to win, it gets pushed back. Hasn't that been the case uh, even in the federal government? Every time you think you got something, you get pushed back. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just the, the nature of this. It, you know, it's not going to be easy. We're trying to undo, you know, almost 100 years of cannabis prohibition. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't think it's, it's time to be discouraged. It's just we got to keep, you know, we got to p- keep putting our resources toward organizations like ours, NCIA and others that are working to change the laws uh, so that we can finally get there. We will get there. And it's just a matter of, of time. And, you know, I mean, unless, barring some really, you know, something, a sea change in the other direction really quickly, I, I can't see us not winning it's just getting past this political dysfunction in Washington that that again is affecting everybody right now on so many fronts on so many fronts too and I want to make sure we make that clear um, we're in the state of New York New York has voted it in as an adult use product a market it's starting um, they're starting to give out licenses and there's a there's a, uh, a movement afoot in New York that is very similar to what happened in Massachusetts or other legal states after it got voted in. A lot of the populace believes, oh, it's legal now. I could just go on the street and start selling it. Well, that's not necessarily true, and it does cause some issues. And yes, indeed, I understand that they put some kind of a a gifting uh, element in there in New York recently that will stop that. Uh, But that happens in every state. If you look back at every state, as soon as the voters, it's funny how the voters get a true democracy, think we're in a true democracy, where the the reality is we're in a republic, and it's a lot more difficult to get things done. The MSOs are out there now um, hiring hired guns, big shot attorneys. They want to challenge the constitutionality of the Controlled Substances Act that we're still kind of dealing with. Uh, Is there any shot at that for them? Well, I mean, I think that I want to see us working on every angle to try to to try to end the prohibition. I think the the likelihood of doing it through the courts right now is is pretty nil. I mean, there's been a lot of lot of challenges through the years and long before these MSOs were were even involved in any of this. And so, I mean, and then back, you know, on the other issue of what people are doing the with the you know unregulated um, businesses here in New York, it, it's absolutely right that this is these aren't legal. I don't want to see anybody going to jail for doing that. I understand the exuberance and the enthusiasm to get into the marketplace, but if, if for if, for those who want to be here long term, uh, it's really going to be important to actually pay attention to how the regulations are going to f- play out, apply for a license, become a, a legitimate operator, because that's the long term play I think in, in New York. And and uh, I would hate to see somebody, you know, end up doing an illegal business now because they're excited about the the fact that there's a loophole, and then later being denied a license as a result of that. And so it's, I think they should be very careful about doing that and, and um, you know, work, work patiently to be able to do this legally. Also, with that said, even before the, the law passed, there were, you know, great delivery services and all sorts of ways to, to purchase cannabis in New York City for, you know, decades before the law passed. So, I'm yeah, I'm shocked to hear that was going on. And, I, and I'm glad that New York does have some, you know, New, New York does have uh, some really kind of restorative justice measures that are unique in their law, where if you have been engaged with the criminal justice system because of being arrested for cannabis offense in the past, you actually have special licenses to, for that. And, and, I, and I'm really, you know, really happy to see that rolling out here. And we know that Senator Booker in New Jersey is a champion of let's get everyone in jail that has been convicted of a cannabis crime out of jail. And, of course, that's the last prisoner project's mission, too. Uh, I give them a lot of credit because three years ago it just started. And here it's almost part of everybody's conversation when they want to do something right, they said, let's get the last prisoner project involved. What, Steve D'Angelo has been a legend in this community and in this, in this world of, of, uh, of cannabis for, gosh, I think since the 70s, he tried to get it legal in DC, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, how important a role has he played? Well, I mean, to me personally, Steve's always been a, a mentor. He was one of the uh, original founders of NCIA, founding members back at, when he was with Harborside and, you know, at this point. 12, 13 years. Probably Steve was involved probably 13 years ago. This before we actually officially launched. Um, I think he's been, you know, uh, he once told me, you know, he said, I'm not a, I'm a pioneer, not a settler. And so he's, you know, I think he's always going to be on the front lines on things like, like this and absolutely support everything he's doing in that uh, last prisoner project and probably anything else he does <laughs> also. 
obviously we're here in New York. It's an NCIA recruiting trip, if you will, in upstate New York. I believe you've got three stops in, in this area. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to sell the benefits of being a member of the NCIA. I am a member, or actually Pro Cannabis Media is a proud member, and uh, we're going to renew, I promise. That being said, you've got an opportunity to tell us why, how important is your organization to the movement? Well, yeah, thanks for the opportunity and, you know, and thanks for your membership. Um, but, you know, if, if you're in the cannabis industry and you're not invested in changing federal laws, then you're really looking, sh you know, short, short term. The only way this industry is going to su survive is if we uh, end federal prohibition, expand the market across the country. And at this point, as I said earlier, it's kind of inevitable that's going to happen. Um, and there's only a few people sitting at the table in D.C. writing the rules of what that's going to look like. It's us representing the small businesses, and it's the handful of MSOs that can afford their own lobbyists. So if you're, a, you know, most likely you, you're listening right now, you can't afford your own lobbyists. Uh, I think it makes sense to, you know, pool your money with other small businesses so that small businesses and Main Street Cannabis has a seat at the table in D.C., uh, and it's not just the big players. Otherwise, they will write the rules to, to lock everyone out because that's just the way the market works. Right. And, I, and, and as much as heat as the MSOs have taken, I, I really have uh, given them an opportunity to say, wait a second, people. Uh, they, they play a very important role in the beginning of a huge industry, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they have, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to disparage them for doing what, what large companies do, but if small businesses don't, make sure that their voice is heard they will be the laws will be written against them and their in their interest that's just the way it plays out in every other sector of the economy so uh so yeah i mean i think it's we have membership plans that are the most affordable of any association in the space as low as a thousand dollars a year uh, and that really helps us do the work that we need to do to, to advance the issue in dc so uh, you can visit our website at thecannabisindustry.org and become a member today there you go. Good job. That, that's what I figured you'd be able to do very easily. Uh, he's Aaron Smith. He's the executive director of the NCIA. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. This has been a very special edition of In the Weeds, On the Road in Albany, New York. And remember to like, share, and subscribe, not just to In the Weeds, but also to all the programming on Pro Cannabis Media. We talk news. We do a, a nationwide roundup every week, and it's anchored by Elena Pinto, who is a network quality anchor because we picked her and she's awesome and we want to thank you for watching and listening and remember it is a whole new world of weed out there use it responsibly thanks for watching thanks for listening Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity To find your identity, it's mind over everything Hey, you want to grow your own plants? Check out Style Lighting's Grow Kit. It has everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high-powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The Grow Kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information.
Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of pro-cannabis media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. Difference is building a solution for that individual. Not just a custom, here's a box, here's a video, here's how you make your VMS. We custom design and custom build every situation for exactly what the customer needs. And we keep the cost low. We have multiple tiers, you know, as far as what you're looking at on the cost side of things. If you want a one time, you know, where you just pay one initial cost, we have that. If you want to maintain your system and have the highest protection and highest capabilities and highest upgrades at all times, we have different plans for you. But we scale it so it's scalable and affordable 100%. Cannabis Media Programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Canna Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.